first and foremost is uh, planner. What, how do we how do we get there? Uh, starting from the Office 365 main page itself, planner is usually a tile that's available here. Uh, otherwise, the the easiest way to access planner is to go ahead and hit your waffle menu once you're in Office 365, and you'll either see another uh, shortcut just like this that'll have planner on there, or you can even go to your all apps if it doesn't show up there and select from the list of all apps that are available to you from this point. Uh, if it does not exist in there, you you might have one of those few SKUs, uh, like Mike was saying, that does not have access to Planner, but it's readily available for, I'd say, 90% or more uh, Office 365 subscriptions. Now, accessing Planner, you'll kind of see, uh, it, a lot of times I like to refer to it as, uh, you know, the grow up from the old to-do wonder list styles. Uh, it, edging yourself into the more robust project management aspects, uh, getting your way to, to the, the further grow up plan as you develop and uh, expand out on your project management capabilities. Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the easiest thing. We're going to create a new plan. Uh, and once we do that, you can either add it to an existing Office 365 group if you're familiar and have that assigned, or you can create one with it as well. For this one, I'm just going to say uh, we're going to keep this as a a low weight one where we want to do Josh's to-do list. So uh, this is the instance where, let's say you don't necessarily have uh, the project management office created up and a whole bunch of projects assigned to you, but you want to have a little bit more of that robust aspect of, uh, of things for you to be able to take a look at your work stream and what you're working on and be able to manage it yourself. So from that standpoint, we have effectively this to-do. And I can go ahead and say, okay, I got my buckets. I got to, uh, to do, you know, and we can create a new bucket and say, I want the, uh, you know, task for later. We, you know, we could say next month. And then we can just easily create another one that says, uh, maybe later. From this point, we can then create tasks. Say, oh, well, uh, I'm looking to, uh, let's see, I got to finish my uh, certifications. That's always a popular one. And you can see that it's easy to just go ahead and add a task, at least to this respect, without having to fill out a lot of information to it. But you can delve into this, and it has a, a, a lot more capabilities for you to go ahead and actually fill out more information pertaining to it. You can create sub-checklists to the items, say, well, in order for me to finish my certification, I have so many steps for it to do. I have to you know, study for a particular ex exam set up your testing time and and then actually you know print it out and be proud of your accomplishments so uh, this gives you the capabilities of uh, taking a, a relatively simple task and having it show up either on the card so that you have multiple steps showing up uh, and you can check them off as you go and kind of have your to-do list in a very simplistic manner. Uh, we can also go ahead and start uh, set your, your start dates and what you expect, and then a due date saying, oh, I, I need to make sure I get this done by you know, May 6th. And you can set a priority, and you can say whether it's in progress or completed here or utilize your buckets that you have no matter what. If you so desire, uh, uh, let's say this is a little bit more of a, a team assignment instead of Josh's to-do, we can say, you know, it's a uh, a, a, the the project management office uh, uh, team to do's and you can assign multiple people on here. So if you so desire, you could add other individuals to your your particular project, uh, which I can show you here. It's just as simple as going up here and adding new members. In this instance, I can go ahead and add Mike, and he'll get added to this particular thing as well. And I can say, oh, well, I need to finish my certifications, but I also want to add mic to it as well so he can see and they do have these nice little color coded things but we can also change those those are just default color codes that you can apply to items now uh, this allows also for the attachment of any files that are necessary any comments that you might have you want to send back and forth so i could go ahead and say uh, i have study material if you need it And then once I send that, it actually makes it as a nice little note within a, kind of a work stream of this particular task. And if Mike so desired, he could go in there and be able to see the uh, the progress that's done on a particular task within here as you create it. 
Now, once you have these completed, you can always go ahead and do a, a checkbox for the items that you have done like we've done so far. Or if something has popped up and I, I got to do some sort of mitigation, I can easily just move this into another bucket as well to associate it with that metadata. So from this point, we can take a look at things if we want to create a uh, a bunch of examples, you know, you know, everyone loves taxes. Uh, it, and, you know, uh, backlog is always a popular one. We can go and do that and say, well, taxes, that can be done maybe later. Hopefully not too much. But <laughs> you can go ahead and review that information and be able to see a breakdown in the chart as well as to kind of have this reporting capabilities on the items that you enter into your existing plan to be able to see how things break down from not started in progress late and, and so on and so forth. The, the, the great usage of this ends up being when you do kind of jump from that initial to-do list item for when you're creating a plan to say more of a robust uh, uh, project before heading into maybe the realm of project for the web where you want to start working on dependencies and items like that. Say you want to do more like an agile type of development work stream. This is an example of one of them. So I've already kind of pre-created this where I have an example app development plan that I have set up here. I got my different buckets that I created where I have planning, analysis, design, implementation, and testing. Those are kind of like my hammock tasks that I want to have these particular items within there. And these are my high level items that need to get done for each, each portion. You can see I'm able to capture a lot of metadata associated with it. I can go ahead and uh, be able to look at all the important items on there, uh, whether it's in progress, due dates, any notes, uh, uh, kind of the, the step up from where we were. And you can see I even have a couple of these listed as pending sign off or verified so you can label those particular color labels to be able to see things uh, at a glance that give you a little bit more of that detail that you might be striving to see in more of a group related task activity such as like uh, an app development process, dev cycle, any sort of review that you would consider using with an agile type of uh, aspect to it. You can also go ahead and take a look at things. If we take a look at the charts here, this gives a little bit more information because now we have uh, several more users in this example where we can then see the status of all the tasks and the breakdown of the priorities that we have set as well as the tasks that are assigned to the different uh, users uh, that are part of this group associated with, uh, with the planner plan. And thirdly, we can go ahead and take a look at the schedule and see how this visually breaks down for estimated dates for the tasks that we created within uh, this planner plan itself and be able to kind of see how this goes through and what uh, what our calendar workflow looks like for this, uh, this example execution and be able to see those items on the side panel as well. Thirdly, uh, so after this point, you can always go ahead and take a look and change how items are grouped so you can easily move stuff around. So the first instance is we're taking a look at items bucket by bucket. We can also go ahead and take a look assigned to and see, oh, well, I have two tasks here that I forgot to actually assign to somebody rather than hunting down those tasks and multiple, uh, you know, modifying them from that standpoint. I can just as easily take these and drag them and drop them and be like, well, Brian, he can work on this testing uh, item and uh, I'll take care of this last one here for the developing the integration testing plans. So now I can use this as a, a quick review of making sure that I have all my tasks assigned out to people who are going to be working on it and then go ahead and see the breakdown. Oh, I want to see what's in progress currently. So we're just starting on this particular one. A couple of them are in progress. Nothing's completed yet. But say you, you want to easily go ahead and update that. The user who's in here just needs to go ahead and do this. Say, oh, I've, I'm ahead of the game. I've already developed the integration test plans before everything else is done because I've done this before in the past. So I can just reuse that material. So uh, and just like that, I'm able to go ahead and, and move it over to the bucket where it is completed in, instead of in progress or not started to be able to rapidly modify my plan without, uh, without too much hassle. Uh, you can also view by your due dates. And, and ones that actually have it on there, if there's no date, it'll actually say. So it's another one of those quick reviews. You can see if you've entered in that information, you can see your breakdowns by labels, which is always useful if you, if you have the different things, if you have like pending sign-offs or verifications of tasks as you're working on it. And then of course, by priority. So if you need to easily move things to become more urgent tasks versus uh, just your, your average medium level task situation. 
Uh, the planner itself does have capabilities uh, to integrate with other items within Microsoft uh, within the Microsoft sphere of Office 365 as well. Uh, one of the primary ones is the ability. This is actually easily integrated with the uh, uh, the team, Microsoft Teams application. You can add this as a tab to any existing team to be able to see uh, your plans uh, from Planner within there. Uh, and uh, there are other ways to actually get this to integrate with the existing items and, and be able to report on it as such as well. But we, we do not have time to go through all of those, unfortunately. But this should give you a good idea for how Planner can be easily set up and utilized going from a sim simplistic idea of just a to-do list to more of an advanced app development sort of aspect. 